Hey guys and welcome to another reaction video. And yeah, today um, I'm looking at the next two episodes from the uh, Taking Taking Ponies to Series uh, series, <laughs> I guess. I really don't like to call it that way. Well, the episodes are Three is a Crowd and Pinky Pride, Pinky's Pride. As some of you guys who are already watching my videos for a while know, I really don't like Pinky's Pride. I really don't like Pinky Pride. Uh, but yeah, let's not talk about that right now. Uh, three is a crowd. Uh, if it's the episode that I think, and yes, it is. It is the episode that I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, the Discord episode where he pretends to be sick. I like it. I really like it. I think it's funny. I like the song, the Glass of Water song, and... Uh, yeah, I just I I like Discord as a character. I but yeah, <laughs> that's about it everything that I can say to it. I really don't know what to say about the episode. So I'm just not gonna say anything about it and just hear what he has to say. I also got a haircut, you probably already know this. It was about time. Three, two, one, click. <laughs> A little bit of, uh, yeah, sound would be nice. I forgot to <laughs> put the sound on again. Excuse me, would you like some cheese with your ham? This is definitely in my top 10 funniest episodes of MLP. <laughs> yes. The humor was so fast-paced and sadistic, I could barely hold in my laughter. Not just from Discord, but from all the other characters, too. <laughs> Here, let me explain what I mean. So, this episode begins with Twilight getting mail. Oh, the male pony wasn't abused this time. And so Spike. <laughs> I'm surprised that Spike doesn't care that he's physically abused all the time. Maybe he just has a high tolerance for pain? Maybe dragons are hardier than we are? Maybe he's brainwashed? Bad writing? Who knows? <laughs> then the main six see Fluttershy off because we certainly can't have her around when Discord gets sick and Fluttershy can't be there to keep him under control. Convenient! Caden shows up in a Very train convenient. that came from the same direction Fluttershy's train left in. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. Does that work? Cadence leaves the train with royal fanfare because I guess it's a formality and Flash Sentry was there. <laughs> Moving on. Twilight and Cadence decide to spend a day with each other looking at Star Swirl, the bearded artifacts. You know, cool. the more I hear about this guy, the more I want to know about him. He was around yeah. at the time of the founding of Equestria, he was apparently on good enough terms with Celestia that she oversaw his research, and he gets an entire museum after him. Tell us more about this guy, darn it! Yes, then Discord shows up with a blue flu. Okay, how many different types of influenza are there in Equestria? <laughs> then again, in the real world, there's about 13 different types of flu, but still, the types of flu that ponies seem to catch seem to have very arbitrary symptoms. Maybe it's because this is a world run by magic? I don't know. Then we get more characters going against their elements, which I'm sure people are going to be crying about. And it seems yeah. we've hit the mother load. Loyalty is the first to ditch, generosity doesn't give up her fainting couch, laughter repelled the spirit of chaos, and honesty tells another half-truth. Maybe Discord just brings out the worst in everyone. Oh, wait, Maybe. he does. Yeah, he does. Huh. I gotta ask a question. What does Discord do when Fluttershy isn't with him? We can see from this episode that he breaks his boredom threshold when he goes to pick on the main six, but what else does he do to pass the time? Does he have a job? Does he help <laughs> Celestia with anything? Does he prank smaller people? Does he just sit around and Fluttershy the whole day? <laughs> Whatever, I can wait for an answer. So, we get to see more moments of Discord and all of his reality warping glory. Well, it seems that whenever Discord shows up, we can assume that's the cue for the animators to go nuts. And nuts <laughs> they went. This was on the level of Friend Like Me from Aladdin. I paused so many times just to catch all the scenes and references. But I'm gonna ask, what exactly is the line Discord is not allowed to cross when using his powers? I get that he's not supposed to usurp thrones or lay waste to towns or anything, but still, what is he actually not allowed to do? The whole using his powers for good instead of evil most of the time is pretty loose and open to some pretty liberal interpretation. No one apparently has any problems with him just playing mind games with them, as long as the damage from his shenanigans isn't permanent. Though, withholding information that could have prevented a nationwide crisis is okay. And now, tricking alicorn princesses yeah. into nearly getting them devoured by an Alaskan bullworm gets a free pass? Quite forgiving these ponies. Yeah. Speaking of which, we got a new creature called the Tatzelworm, which kind of reminds me of a cross between a graboid and that flower from Jumanji. Considering the lack of local wildlife, I wonder what it eats. There's nothing around, really, that would seem to satiate its appetite, considering it apparently has a taste for meat. Unless its typical diet lies below the ground, or unless the oh, changelings are around. Or both? 
Or In actual myth, a Tatsu worm is said to be so poisonous that even its breath could kill a human. Or in this case, its mucus can poison a Draconicus. I wonder if the writers have a list or something that's readily available if they ever need to insert a random mythical creature. Fingers crossed for hellhounds! I also want to talk about alicorns, as it seems the show is making them less and less like deities. And this isn't a bad thing, there's just a no. lot of things surrounding them that are never explained. You yeah. only see that it honestly doesn't take much to defeat them as far as giant monsters go. Maybe their kingdom isn't as powerful as we think it is, as they've been shown to be easily taken down if caught off guard. Sure, Celestia and Luna raise the sun and moon, but... Does that really take a lot of effort if you think about it? We just assume their sun and moon are proportional to ours. Who knows, maybe they'll explain it, eventually. And about the ends of Equestria. So, Equestria doesn't seem to be the name of the planet or the continent, rather it's a country. Glad yeah. to get that canonically cleared up. And it seems that the further you go, the more likely you are to run into monsters. Is this where the changelings live? Are there other kingdoms out there? Who knows? I'm noticing a couple of complaints that the morals are getting repeated, when I had to disagree. Sure, one could draw the comparison of this episode's moral to the best night ever, but the thing is, plenty of other episodes have similar morals to each other. Luna Eclipse moral is similar to Bridal Gossips. And let's not forget that many episodes involve characters relearning how to get over their consistent flaws. It's just that certain morals sound different with context, and this one is no different. The Gala's moral was friends make bad situations better, and this moral was how a chaotic situation brings friends closer. Oh, it's less sorry, of a repeat and more of an expansion. Though, I'm a bit worried that Discord is eventually going to be the boy who cried wolf. He is a big trickster, and relationships are reinforced with trust, so this whole deceiving the main six thing is concerning. Is anyone else besides me thinking when mm -hmm. something bad is going to happen and he tells others about it, no one's going to believe him? Hopefully I'm just Probably. taking this way too seriously. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. That was nice. <sighs> uh, I... Yeah. <laughs> what can I really say about it? I think he's right with pretty much everything. I can't remember anything that I would disagree with. So... Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what to say. I'm... <sighs> Pinky's pride. Let's get this over with. Uh, I don't like it. I already said it. I really, really don't like it. Uh, it's not because of a cheese sandwich. Don't worry about that. I think he was pretty good. It's about the main six. Uh, I've I know I don't know where, but somewhere I've heard. I think in a review I've heard. Uh, yeah, he said. Yeah, they don't really behave correctly. They should have probably done something else. But really. It's not all that bad, or something along that I can't remember. I say no. It it is that bad, but that's that's just me. That's my if I just have to say if I were Pinkie Pie in that situation, if I would have done a lot to organize a party for one of my best friends, and she just say, "Well, shit, we got another one," so I would be pissed. Ah, uh, really. I would have, I would have, I guess, um, what the point was, like, what when I watched this, what I thought, uh, great, they are going to organize the party together, and then there's going to be some sort of conflict, and I was looking forward to that, but no, Piki Pie got sad and just stopped doing anything with the party, and nobody noticed? Well, some friends you are. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I really really don't like what the main six did it there um it's just oh, it's, i like I, I i kind of like where the episode was going with that big conflict and then at the end noticing like at the the goof off i think it was called uh i've been going way out of my way i totally forgot about my friends i almost hurt one of my friends uh just because i tried to be the better party planner than this one guy cheese sandwich that's not that's something that i can really yeah that's nothing nothing wrong I, but i think couldn't have, it could it couldn't you have done it any any other way like i said i would have enjoyed it more if they would have like worked together and then it just didn't work because i mean the way i would have liked the episode more if um they would have started organizing the party together and then because Pinkie Pie, uh, Cheese Sandwich wanted to prove Pinkie Pie how good he is, 
because apparently that's what he wanted to do. Uh, he's just trying to do all of the party uh, of the party planning alone, and because Pinkie Pie is organized, because the party is for Rainbow Dash, uh, that's really important to Pinkie Pie, and she wanted to do most of the work alone. And then they're, well, it just doesn't work. Both want to do all of the work, and then they get into some fight, and then the goof off starts or something. That's that's something I would have enjoyed much more. But instead, we get the main six just being kind of. <sighs> I just don't like it. I actually don't want to talk about it. So, I what I think I think he's not having that big of a problem. I can see why people like it, but I really don't. <sighs> I doubt that he will have that big of a problem with the episode. I. He's probably also going to pick up about the behavior of the main six that it wasn't quite right, but I I really don't think that he that he's so that he disliked the episode as much as I did. So let's just get started. I probably won't say a lot during this. I don't want to, you know. Yeah. 3 2 1 click. <laughs> Riddling! This episode needs riddling! <laughs> oh, goodness. This episode was... energetic, to say the least. This episode opens up with a pony named Cheese Sandwich, voiced by Weird Al Yankovic. Honestly, I'm not surprised he's in here, seeing as he was one of the first celebrity bronies and closely worked with some of the staff. It was only a matter of time. He did well, though I've got a few things to say about his performance in this. On the one hand, hearing him just speak, he actually seems like a unique pony and not a celebrity avatar, which happens a lot with popular actors or singers who voice roles like this. But when he starts singing, I don't see Cheese Sandwich, all I see is Weird Al Pony. This isn't a bad thing at all, and not a fault of the voice actor in any way, it's just I've heard Weird Al so much growing up, it's hard for me to not I place didn't. the voice. As good as an actor and singer as he is, Al can't disguise it while singing. It was still good though, don't get me wrong. We're given hints at something mm. called a cheese sense, which relates to pinky sense. If you see my review of Feeling Pinky Keen with Zane Russell, we detail what we think the pinky sense is, basically that as an earth pony, pinky receives signals or warnings from the earth due to her connection to it, and it manifests as twitches. Okay. This seems to reinforce that earth pony magic manifests as something, and it seems with each pony it manifests as something different. With cheese, he seems to be able to predict where ponies get together and celebrate something. With farmers like Applejack, I assume that the Earth gives them warnings on where to plant crops and how to take care of their trees. Maybe. And stuff. Back to the episode. As it appears, Rainbow Dash is having a birthday and gets a huge party from both Pinky and Cheese. Great, another ego boost for her. <laughs> Pinky soon feels outclassed by Cheese and starts to feel useless. Don't laugh because I say this with a straight face. Pinky has serious issues. Some might notice that I like to assign characters a virtue and a vice. I know it's not an end all be all about their personality, but still, I like to do it. Like, for instance, Applejack's virtue is fortitude due to her integrity, and her vice is pride due to reasons I've stated in previous videos. I have virtues and vices assigned in my head for each character, but this episode changed my thoughts on Pinky's vice. The more I think about it, I don't think Pinky's vice is pride despite what the episode tells me. Most no. would say the next obvious choice would be gluttony due to her constant efforts to enjoy a life of overabundance and her tendency to take more than she needs. Honestly, I think Pinky's vice is wrath. Pinky is driven by her emotions and has almost no control over them, and they cause her to make enormous leaps in logic and she always seems to come to a negative conclusion. She yeah. takes a lot of things at face okay. value and doesn't really consider context whenever she hears something. She's very confrontational, antagonistic, and even violent at points. And whenever she <laughs> fails, she takes it really hard and likes to give up. She has this almost childish outlook on the world. That being said, it was nice to see her bounce back. Once Pinky fell back onto her memories of the good times she had, she became motivated again. Granted, she was motivated for the wrong reasons, but she was still motivated. And Pinky challenges Cheese Sandwich to a goof-off, and apparently there is a manual about this, implying this has been done before between two other party ponies, implying being a party pony is a commonplace thing in Equestria, and there's a structure to this sort of thing. I gotta ask, does throwing parties bring in an actual salary? <laughs> Given the costs of hiring construction crews, renting vehicles, cost of supplies and decorations, and sometimes collateral damage, possibly suing, or do they get the money for this stuff? Pinky has an occupation as a baker, kind of stretching the salary part there, but what about Cheese Sandwich? How does he get paid? Donations? Are they paid by the government? Is there some sort of party pony tax that pays them? Who knows? 
I have to say, the goof off is probably one of my favorite moments in MLP history. <laughs> one thing I'm fairly surprised that hasn't been explored more in media is the music battle. Some of my favorite moments in songs, video games, and movies come from music battles like Scott Pilgrim, Guitar Hero, Devil Went Down to Georgia, Rhythm Thief. And this is no different as the highlight of this episode. Let me put this in perspective. We just bore witness to epic ham to ham musical combat between Pinkie Pie and Weird Al. <laughs> My life is complete. One thing I'd like to say, I am so glad Cheese Sandwich was merely an antagonist and not a villain. He wasn't maliciously trying to replace Pinkie Pie, he just wanted to work on a party. It mm -hmm. was Pinkie who initiated the conflict. Cheese didn't I know guess, what Pinkie yeah. was feeling. His skills were just challenged out of the blue and he accepted. And quite honestly, I don't think my childhood could take having Weird Al being a bad guy. There's a couple moments in this that really sell this episode. One in particular is with Rainbow Dash. She's very confident in her abilities, but it's nice to see even she has a pressure threshold. It seems that whenever Rainbow Dash lacks the time, or in this case, shotgunned with something she isn't prepared for, she tends to let the pressure get to her. Also, I get the feeling that some of Celestia is rubbing off on Twilight, and that she already knows the answer to the problems her friends are facing, but she's letting her friends figure things out for themselves. After asking okay. Pinkie about helping Chi set up Rainbow's party, I get the feeling that Twilight knew what she was going through, but instead she opts to let Pinkie solve the issue mm -hmm. on her own. Yeah, After that's... All, I kind of have a problem with that. The little moment that interested me was the quick like, no interaction help with at Diamond all? Tara no? and Silver Spoon. Okay. Diamond seems to be in the habit of pushing Silver Spoon around, and Silver's complete lack of surprise when Diamond pushed her Sunday off kind of implies she's used to Diamond being a jerk, and her retaliation seems to show that she deals with the sort of behavior from Diamond frequently. Not only are they jerks to everyone else, they're jerks to each other? Jeez. <laughs> and I know some people are going to complain that Pinky's friends weren't being very encouraging to Pinky. Yes. Okay, one. They didn't know what Pinky was going through. Didn't they? Seeing as how she tried to hide her feelings from everyone, how are they supposed to well, know how she was feeling about she didn't do a really good job about Two, that. Two, Rarity's comment about his skills being superior doesn't mean she was saying he was better. Superior isn't strictly a direct comparison word. Superior is also a synonym for high quality, high standard, expertly, etc. Even if Rarity was uh, comparing, maybe she was comparing his work to other party ponies she's seen. Yeah, After no, all, I, I just confirmed yeah, there are more okay. party ponies in the crush here than just Cheese and Pinky, and I know this because I take this show way too seriously. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, this wasn't all too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well. He didn't change my mind. Sorry. <laughs> it's, like I said, it's just a thing that... Oh, that's just me. If I... Yeah. I don't know. I just... I just really, really don't like the way the main six behaved around Pinky. I, I just would have enjoyed it if it were completely different. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't want to talk about it, actually. <sighs> he tried to justify it. I'm not ex entirely sure what he meant with Rarity. I haven't watched the episode often enough to know what Rarity said about the other thing. Not knowing what how Pinkie Pie felt. She didn't show up at all at the party planning. I mean, really? No suspicion, no asking, no nothing. And I also think that she did, really did a good job hiding her feelings, so... But, well, it's my opinion. I don't like... Sorry, I don't like it. If you like it, that's fine, I just don't. But, yeah, well, whatever. If someone's covering an episode that you really, really don't like, I doubt you will enjoy at whatever he's saying unless he's really negative and really on your opinion but I don't I don't like I said I don't have a problem with someone liking it I can totally see why people would enjoy it I just don't <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I would say I'm looking forward to the next one but I think I believe the next one is simple ways which I also don't like <laughs> These are the two episodes of the entire series that I really, really dislike. The other ones are either okay-ish or good. <laughs> or really good. <laughs> so, well... I can just say that I'm glad I got this over. And, yeah. I'm also glad that I'm covering two episodes at a time, because if this would be the only... If I would only react to the one, then this video would be really bad. Like, I... 
at least you could enjoy my first reaction to the first video. <laughs> I guess. Well, this video is long enough, gonna be a little bit of a bitch to upload. Uh, so I'm just gonna end this right here. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not in a really good mood, which is a problem. It, it is because of the episode, yes. This episode always puts me in a very good mood. And not in, in a very bad mood. I actually got angry like <laughs> the last two, three times I watched the episode. I just really don't like I'm sorry, but I really don't like it. So. I'm just gonna end the episode here. I say you s still enjoyed at least the first half of this video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.